Hi everyone, welcome and uh, my name is Kate Watson from BEAM. Thank you so much for joining us today for Spin a Tale, a creative commission for the Derwent Valley Mills World Heritage Site Great Place Scheme. And it's premiering today on Dali Abbey Day 2021. We're really excited to share this series of short films for the first time and I'm delighted to introduce our special guests. First we have Alison Vasey from the Derwent Valley Mills. Hi Alison. Hi everyone. Welcome Janet Dean from the Dali Abbey Community Association. Hello. <laughs> and Leo Geyer, the Artistic Director of Constella Rock Ballet. Hi everyone. Hi Leo. Hi. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us. Okay, so before we get started, um, I'm going to hand over to Alison to introduce why the Derwent Valley is such a special place. So the Derwent Valley is unique because it's home to Derwent Valley Mills Real Heritage site which runs 15 miles along the River Derwent from Derby to Matlock Bath where water power was harnessed to power the world's first factory nestled in this beautiful landscape. Dolly Abbey is an important part of the site as it showcases the most complete surviving 18th century mill complex in the world created by the Evans family, family in the late 1700s and has now home to an amazing community which is being celebrated today. We're delighted to be able to share Spinnacale with you. It's a wonderful finale for our major arts commission with a great place scheme, funded by National Lottery Heritage Fund and Art Council England. The creative programme produced by Beam has been running since 2018 and has been bringing to life aspects of our heritage story in different locations through wonderful variety of artistic forms by hugely talented artists. Constella's collaboration today with Spin a Tale and with the uh, Dali Abbey Community Association for Dali Abbey Day brings together so many superb singers, choirs, dancers, performers, and everybody that has been making bunting for the local, for, um, for the village as well, is an amazing testament to everyone involved. And thank you all for your creativity, perseverance, and really unending enthusiasm to bring in um spin a tale to reality so i'll just pass over to janet now to talk a little bit more about dali abbey day and working with constella thank you alison in 2019 constella opera ballet visited us to plan for 2020 they fell in love with dali abbey could see why we loved dali abbey and we fell in love with them in Spin a Tale, Constella have interpreted our past and energised with their talent, their insight and their fresh ideas and connected us through their art. So thank you, Constella. Last Dali Abbey Day, we, we managed to raise enough funds to, to kit out the village with five 24-7 defibrillators. This time we want to raise enough money to start to set up a unit of um, East Midlands Ambulance Service first responders, the community first responders. And of course, to maintain our village hall and our village church, St Matthews. We please, so do please support us. And as Alison said, please come and visit and find the big bobbins and look for the bunting. We're now up over 525 flags and another 32 were given to me last night. <laughs> so uh, incredible bunting and so on. But we do have a special programme and we've got a map with historical um, elements to it. So it makes your walk round even more interesting. And we've got a quiz all available at our wonderful hub, the, the village stores. Um, so, but you can help us by donating every single penny counts on the Just Giving uh, um, Dali Abbey Village Hall, it's under. Um, particular thanks to the Dali Abbey Historical Group, Tony Lintot in particular, to people of, at St Matthew's Church, and another particular thanks and big thanks to Sarah and her colleagues at the shop who've been the centre for all kinds of things. Now, it gives me great pleasure to uh, 
hand over to Leo, artistic director, and if he, for him to say a few words about how the how the journey that they've had in order to turn the, their vision into you know and give it real life and enthusiasm. Thank you. Thank you very much, Janet, and a uh, warm welcome to everyone at home. So Constella Opera Ballet is dedicated to cutting edge interdisciplinary performance for today's audience. What this means is that we bring together pioneering artists of numerous disciplines and provide opportunities for the public to be creators, performers and audiences. Spin a Tale is no exception. Our aim was to collaborate with the local community to create a multidisciplinary celebration of Dali Abbey. In every filmed piece, the community has participated in either the creative conception, the performance, or both. In addition, a huge number of bunting flags have been made by local people as part of our installation of giant bobbins and threads of bunting, which are now on display throughout Dali Abbey. Spinatel has been two years in the making and has undergone many twists and turns as we've navigated through the pandemic. I'm therefore exceptionally proud of Constella's artistic team, the Dali Abbey community and partner organisations for their unrelenting creative energy. Together, we have found ingenious ways to collaborate, resulting in much greater participation than we ever thought possible and outstanding artistic results, despite almost no encounters in person. Several hundred people have participated in Spinatel, and although I don't have time to individually name you all, I would like to wholeheartedly thank you and congratulate you on your artistic triumphs. To name a few, I would like to thank my dedicated partners in crime, which is Natalie and Alice from Constella, and also our artistic team comprising Sarah, Ruth, Holly and Seb for their outstanding creativity. I would also like to thank Kate, Janet and the whole Derwent Valley team and our funders, without whom there would be no tales to spin. Thank you and Kate, over to you. Thank you, everybody. OK, so before we watch the first film, um, I thought it'd be useful to just run through the format for this live stream. So we'll be playing each film in turn and pausing to answer questions um, from the comments section. There are seven films in total. So please use the YouTube comments section um, to you know, give us your feedback and ask questions. And we'll try and answer these in between the films. Um, you will need to be logged into YouTube to be able to add comments. So also worth noting the films do vary in length from about two minutes to seven minutes and we expect the events take about an hour. Um, as it's a live stream, you know, the visual and sound quality could vary depending on your internet connection. So if you want to enjoy them in full, they will, they are all available on the Derwent Valley Mills YouTube channel. Okay, so Leah, do you want to introduce the first film and I will share it? Lovely, thank you, Kate. So the first filmed piece we're going to see is Water Hymn, and this is a opera ballet inspired by the Dali pageant by Wendy Bitten. And this brand new piece, written especially for this project, pays homage to the unceasing energy of the River Derwent that gave power to the former cotton industry. Due to the lack of rainfall when we went up to do our filming, we made a last minute filming decision and changed location to film on the bank of the river itself. And I'm sure you will agree that this worked the truth.
Wow, what a beautiful film, really powerful. Um, I think you get a real sense of the kind of the power of the water, don't you? Did Leo, do you want to say a few words about how this film was made? Because I know there's a lot of different voices involved as well as the as well as the dancers. Yes, yeah, so this is um, one of the complicated aspects of this project in that the singers, uh, even though it sounds uh, very beautifully together, uh, that all of those singers were recorded individually at home with very modest uh, setups. And it's the genius of our audio engineer, Musicata Media, uh, who had the skill to stitch them all together to create that uh, complete recording. And uh, the music itself, um, it may sound quite complicated, but the, the idea was to think about not only the energy of, of the river, but also thinking about the, the mechanisms of uh, the, the water mills. And you'll hear these four musical lines, which are then um, inverted into different voices. And a similar principle was used in the dance. So we had these choreographical phrases, um, which were then following a particular voice part and then uh, changed into a different context as the music was, was repeated. And so um, really focusing on a very close relationship between both music and dance, and of course, thinking very carefully and deeply and profoundly uh, about the River Derwent and uh, what that means for Darley Abbey. Brilliant. Janet, we've got a comment here from the Derwent Valley team um, that you might be able to answer, asking about the pageant that inspired the work. Yes, it was 1989 that uh, I wasn't here then, um, but I've been told lots and lots about it. I've seen the video and uh, uh, some of the people are still with us a lot, unfortunately, have passed away since then. And uh, I gather that uh, John Worthy, who holds the archive of the pageant, uh, the script, etc., he has been ringing round and finding all the people who were in the pageant and hoping that they um, might be watching or at least uh, get a program and so on. So we pay homage to it in the, the program and we use what the narrator said at the end of the pageant to be so true for today about battling against all kinds of things and coming up with inspiration and entrepreneurial ways out of things but it are being about the spirit of of the um, of the village mm. absolutely thank you alison do you want to add anything no it's, i just thought it was amazing it's just um like like you said kate it really sort of brings the the rhythms and the rushing of the water and the power of the water together combining the voices with the music with the choreography it's just beautiful i think the, i've only just learned that the voices you put those together because i my initial response was the fluidity of the whole thing not just physically but the music just portrayed the the dam and the the power and, and yet also the sort of tranquility um, and i loved in the film there was one duck that seemed to be so curious that it kept hanging around and kept coming back. <laughs> <laughs> it was lovely. Yeah, thank you brilliant brilliant okay well we'll move uh, on to the next film then leo Yes, so our next film is of uh, collaboration with Dada Youth Company, which is uh, the dance centre based in Derbyshire. And this piece is called Evolutionary Cycles. And this was recorded during lockdown with dancers from Dada Youth Company uh, in a performance of their own choreography, which reflects and comments on the evolutionary cycles of humankind. Uh, I'm sure that you will agree that these amazing students have done extraordinarily well to collaborate and perform despite the constraints of lockdown. And uh, I would also like to uh, sincerely thank our uh, Danish choreographer, Sarah Luz Christiansen, who's uh, worked really, really hard with these dancers as well, of course, of creating water here. So uh, here we are with film number two.
Brilliant. Oh, it's just so great that you've been able to involve Daydara and they've been able to involve so many young people in, you know, creating these beautiful performances in their own homes. That's so beautiful. I This is where I start getting all emotional. <laughs> <laughs> it was so beautiful. Their movements to the music and, you know, the fact that they are so young and they've managed to do this you know, completely apart. And I loved that there were twins in there. That was great. Yeah. So thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Leo, do you want to say anything about this film? And um, again, I just wanted to pay tribute to the students and uh, for not letting the constraints get in the way in their creativity. And you, you saw a clip there of uh, and them all actually performing together on Zoom, uh, which just goes to show that if there is a will, there is a way. And uh, I think uh, given those circumstances, the, the, the result really is uh, outstanding. And it was wonderful to find an opportunity for them to be part of this project and explore some of the, the themes and the ideas that we have been doing. So again, thanks to them and to Sarah, of course, for enabling it to happen. Absolutely. We've got some lovely comments coming in as well um, on the on the both films so far. Okay, so we'll I think we'll move straight into Tangled, Leo. Great, yes. So here we are on to film number three. So Tangled is a piece for solo dancer reflecting the former cotton industry in Dali Abbey with strings of fabric which are tied to the body, illustrating how we cannot fully be separated from the history in which we live. I would like to pay a particular tribute to our dancer Daniel, who was totally unfazed by filming at dawn uh, in the cold. And though I have to say that an old duvet did come in handy here to keep Daniel warm in between shoots. So here we are, film number three, Tangled.
Wow, another really moving film. I just think the imagery in this film is really powerful. What was it like, Leo, working in that tiny, in the tiny space of the toll booth? <laughs> well, one of the, the very difficult things was that uh, the toll booth is, of course, very, very small. And so uh, there's not a great deal uh, of space to move in. But of course, there's not much space also to uh, to build the uh, the costume and installation itself, which was uh, designed and made by uh, Seb and uh, Holly. And uh, and of course, we needed to make sure that we kept the space ventilated whilst we were doing it. So um, yeah, it was all a little bit of a squeeze and also quite cold as well. So uh, I, I think we started at... Uh, just before 6 a.m. Uh, in, in the morning uh, to do that filming because, uh, as, as some of you will know uh, from Dahlia before, that, that road where the toll booth is is actually often quite busy. So we, we thought we, we should do it nice and early in the morning uh, to avoid any tr troubles with traffic. And um, and also actually because the light was, was particularly nice at that time. But uh, yes, it was uh, quite, quite an intense start to the day. <laughs> I just thought that was so beautiful. I just thought that was so beautiful. And it was beautifully calming. And yet I was thinking at the same time. Um, so thank you again. Yeah. Alison, did you have any thoughts on this? Yeah, I just wanted to add as well that the filming um, for that is just really, really clever. The way that you've been able to build the different shots to really emphasise the movements and the, the, the themes coming up there. I just, yeah, it's, it's really, really cleverly done. Um, and yeah, in, in the tiny space that is the toll booth uh, and, and just being able to use that space is, is just really lovely. Yeah, it's, it, and, and the themes and yeah, it's, it's a really abstract way of thinking about history and how history affects all of us and, and our past and how we bring those things with us and um, so yeah really thought-provoking and, and powerful piece of work absolutely Definitely. thank you very much Alison and if I may add to that um, on the subject of filming is to uh, really uh, thank uh, YSP Media and uh, Chris in particular um, for working really really hard on this piece to get a really cinematic film uh, feeling and of course that's uh, partly due to the fact that it is all filmed in slow motion, which is um, certainly for, for us who normally work in, in uh, live performances is a completely kind of different way of thinking. So it was wonderful to work with, with Chris there who had that insight and thought as to how to really achieve uh, such a beautiful outcome. Thanks, Leo. And again, some lovely, lovely comments coming in as well about this film. Uh, so we've got three more films left. Um, so shall we move on to Hanging by a Thread? Yes, so our next film on the menu is Hanging by a Thread Billowing Through a Space. And this is our collaboration with Derby University and the uh, BA Dance course. So inspired by the contemporary dance icon Martha Graham and her work uh, Lamentation, um, is a, which is a solo dance um, for dancer and fabric. The uh, students of the University of Derby explore the use of fabric within the park of Dali Abbey and the, the, the sense of, of disconnect that we have endured through the pandemic is portrayed through a longing connection with fabric.
know, I just I just love how the young people have really embraced the brief on this film. It's so poetic. Leo, Absolutely. Yes, so um it's sort of similar to in fact pretty much all of these pieces is that uh, the final result doesn't doesn't quite um, show the complexity <laughs> that has gone behind uh, getting to that point. So the research and development for that piece began during lockdown when Sarah was presenting some of the ideas to the students whilst they were all uh, at home in their individual uh, residence and exploring these ideas with, of course, very, very limited space and they weren't there together. And it was only, I think, a week before that filming that they were able to get together and explore some ideas together. So, uh, again, similarly, these students have just done extremely well, given the circumstances, to, to create something uh, really artistically compelling and to really, as, as you say, keep Kate, to really explore the, the brief um, and the different ways in which fabric can be used to convey uh, this message. Janet, do you want to say anything about this? I think you were getting quite emotional during that. Definitely. I just love it. And it particularly, it's, it's our lovely Darley Park, which were, were the gardens of the Evans family, which were given to the people of, of Darley and Derby, you know, to use. And Darley Park's well loved throughout the city. People do travel, um, particularly on Sundays, hoping for better weather tomorrow for the journey across the city for the bobbins. But um, oh, it's lovely. And I loved all of it. And but the particular piece at the end where the colour comes back in and the rower goes past and goes up to the sky. I just thought that was so positive and almost like the the darkness of the mills, although we weren't a sort of satanic mill, but um, the darkness of the mills up to the colour that is in the mills today. Um, and even more so with the bobbins and, and the event. So, oh, thank you again. <laughs> 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 Absolutely. And, and if I may uh, come in there at that point, which is to thank Alice Marshall from Derby University for uh, facilitating that performance and, of course, the filming. And, and indeed, Janet, that moment there at the end is really beautiful and, and ends with a really positive message about the future. Alison, did you want to come in? I just love um the tempo changes as well um so the different transitions of the music and and how as as the, the, the sort of performance goes on the tempo comes up and and then does that end with the change to the color um yeah I, I i loved it all i thought it was really clever really cleverly put together with with the different shots and obviously the choreography so congratulations really um to everybody for that one fabulous yeah definitely um okay so before i said there was only three films left but there was actually four so now we're on to um requiem Leo. thank you kate yes so when we first went up to dali abbey and got a real sense of the place and all of the, the various uh, important aspects of the village one of the things that we were really struck by was uh, the church and in particular um, some of the the graves and uniquely the Evans family owners of Dali Abbey's cotton mill created a micro welfare state which included the provision of gravestones for workers and children who sadly passed away very young so in this recording we pay our respects uh, with the introit from Foray's Requiem and believe it or not but all of the singers and organ were recorded individually from people's homes using phones as recording devices and again a huge thanks to Music Heart Media for stitching us together in what sounds very convincingly like the various singers from across the country which was indeed the case are all together in one place.
Oh, it's such a moving, such a moving piece. And amazing that so many different people were involved, like you say, from across the country. Yes, absolutely. And uh, I'd like to thank um, the High Holborn Chamber Choir and their music director, Rachel Maybe, and also the Exeter College Chapel Choir and their music director and organist, um, Chris Holman there, as well as uh, numerous uh, singers in Darley Abbey and beyond uh, who took part in, in that recording. And uh, it really, really does, it, it completely um, uh, knocked me sideways when I first heard how how well it, it actually sounds with, with everyone coming together. So I'm, I'm delighted in the way that this one turned out. Janet or Alison, do you want to say anything about this film? Just so moving. <laughs> um, and not sombre, but still, yeah, moving and, and kind of onward. Yeah, about the sort of positive aspect of that. One lovely thing is that the people at uh, St Matthew's Church have actually created a tableau in front of the moment the in front of the bobbin installation and uh, it's two beautiful um, children of the time and also with um, nods to the fact that as a part of this welfare state was that the people uh, the workers would often get a, a milking cow or a pig as a as in the valley and they were also um, given an allotment and expected to grow their own vegetables so the tableau actually pays homage to all of those things so i do encourage you to to take a look yeah so thank you again leo wonderful okay so um on to brick road a bit of a change of tempo and different approach Yes, absolutely. So uh, I'd like to thank here uh, Ruth Mariner for uh, writing and directing this piece. So this uh, is Brick Row, which is a music drama filmed cinematically by uh, YSP Media once again. Um, and in this original piece, uh, three of Constella Opera Valley's um, artists showcase the architectural history of Darley Abbey, focusing on the houses of Brick Row, which were built to attract workers away from the industrial hub of Derby and into the new industry of Darley Abbey. Um, I would also like to um, let everyone know that this particular piece is uh, dedicated to Jane Manning OBE, uh, who was an outstanding contemporary soprano who gave uh, over 350 world premieres. And uh, she was Kinsella's uh, patron. And sadly, she passed away um, only a couple of weeks ago. And we know that she would have very much approved of the, um, I don't know if I want to give it away, but uh, the soprano singing in this particular piece. all this? <laughs> My doubt! Needs must, Mrs. Bates! What in the name of Mary? Don't you be dirty at stones! Now, Mrs Bates, a well-kept house starts with well-kept stones. We're workers of Darley, not Staffordshire. Strength move 
Just stopping by. Next week's your lime wash. Oh, well, thank the Lord for that. Hey, I've been on my feet all winter. February started at Hill Square. Just these here left before I start the old darn thing again. I'm sorry, Tom. My head's in lather. Hey, mash us a cup of tea, lass. I'm fair parched. Aye, that I can. But I won't have them clothes in house. Don't you be doing that after next week. Mr Taylor, this is no place for a man. It's you who's bringing it out on the street. Have you not got work to do? More fodder for the mill. <laughs> That's the way of putting it. Mm. How are your lads getting on? Oh, grand, aye, grand. House is a bit quiet, though. So we'll be moving up to West Row, I expect. Hey. Eh? I was up there last week. Mrs Shaw's moving into a one bed now, her Sarah's getting married. Well, no one's said out to me yet. You expecting they'll let you keep this to yourself? No. No, of course not. I'll go when it's time. Beautiful, ain't it? It is. Hey. You'll be alright, love. I know. It's a girl, Mrs Bates. A healthy baby girl. Oh, that's grand. I thought that was just just wonderful. Like it feels like um, like the trailer for a longer story. I want to find out more. I thought that was just just wonderful. Like it feels like um... sorry about that. Leo, do you want to say anything about this? Yes, I, I just want to say that this was actually one of the, the pieces that we uh, really had to to think very carefully about in terms of how we would transform this from 
what would have been a live performance to a filmed piece. So we went through quite a few different directions. We had to reconsider various things and of course the location. So those of you who know Dali Abbey well will know of course that we weren't in one of the Brick Rose houses themselves, but we were actually in the schoolhouse. And uh, this is one of, one of the many obstacles that we had to overcome with regards to COVID. So uh, a huge thanks to uh, the owner of a schoolhouse uh, of the schoolhouse for allowing us to to film there and again also I'd like to thank um, all of our performers for their Derbyshire accent which I have to say I think they did very convincingly <laughs> but Janet may say otherwise I'm not sure. <laughs> We must thank um, Michael Armston, who owns the building, and uh, also his um, his son and family live at the other end. So uh, <laughs> um, I must tell you one funny thing: that the primary school one of the primary school teachers came to see me the other day, and she said that the children remember, or some of them saw the filming, and they were convinced that they. Were, it was going to be an episode of Peaky Blinders. <laughs> so, um, but they've had to sort of say, no, no, this is much better than Peaky Blinders. <laughs> so uh, so some of the children will look, be looking forward to that. Brilliant. I found, there's a piece, I found it sad in one, one aspect for her. And, but it, again, is that thing about moving on and in life, if you like. And, and what a stunning voices that were were in that though. Yeah, thank you. Yes, absolutely. And uh, we are very fortunate uh, to have a wonderful team of, of performers in that piece. And uh, also just to add, because I think we also have a question um, about this as well, is that um, Ruth Mariner did quite a lot of uh, research into this particular period to understand how the social aspects of the mill culture works. So um, we are uh, very confident that that is a, a true portrayal of what society was like at that time and, and what it meant for families when uh, people were, were older and of course when there are new members of the family, what that meant for other people living in these houses. Thanks, Leo. Okay, so we have now got our final film. Um, now, when Spin a Tale was um, imagined as a live event, we were always going to have a grand finale. And I, I feel that this film really is the grand finale of the series of films. Um, so, Leo, I'll let you introduce it. Sure. So um, prepare yourselves for heart melting, I think, is the preface that has to be given here. <laughs> and um, this is an, a perfect example of how Constella has worked with the community to, in this case, create lyrics for a song. I have gone ahead to then make the song itself. And then children from Walter Evans Primary School have then recorded it. I would particularly like to thank the head and deputy head of the Walter Evans Primary School for their enthusiasm and dedication to make this recording happen. And again, it's sort of not made particularly clear from the recording about the magic that has gone behind the scenes to make this possible. And in due to COVID restrictions, of course, the children have been kept in their year groups and each year group has sung two lines each before being passed on to another child, uh, another group of children rather. So uh, again, some very ingenious stitching has had to uh, occur to, to bring it all together and to make one, uh, I'm sure you'll agree, very convincing whole. So here we are, Darley, Abby and me.
<laughs> well done, yeah, well done to everybody. <laughs> oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> Mm, I'm really <laughs> loving now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just so fantastic. Go on, Alison. I, 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 it's just so joyful, absolutely joyful. And the, the words that you've written um, and the music and everything. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm swelling up as well. <laughs> And the, wor the words are in the program. <laughs> the words are yeah. in the program. The words are in the program. But just yeah, thank you to all of the the children and and the school and the headmaster and everybody and and you, Leo, for pulling that together. It's just absolutely wonderful. And hopefully, that will have a life. <laughs> I, ho I hope so absolutely and uh, again I, I just really want to to thank my uh, creative team for, for this piece and uh, particular also uh, Ruth who worked with um, uh, numerous people across the community to to, to write the lyrics and um, which uh, I found certainly very inspiring from a musical perspective and uh, it was great to see the children really uh, committed and uh, I, I, I hear um, that many of the children are now continuing to sing that song. So I, I may have accidentally written an earworm, which <laughs> um, everyone will be singing for, for <laughs> many a time onwards. But uh, anyway. <laughs> yes, Janet, didn't you say you heard uh, children singing it on the street yesterday? Yes, I, I came home after a very tiring day putting the bunting up and so on. and. Uh, and there they all were in the street playing and their parents were there and they were they were singing it and demanding that their parents go on their phones now to get the film. And uh, I had to explain that that was a premiere, just like the Oscars and things like and big films with stars in. It wouldn't happen till 11 this morning. So uh, hopefully some of the parents uh, are watching. Yeah. Wonderful, thank you. Absolutely brilliant. Well, thank you to everybody for joining us um, and for all the lovely comments that are coming in. Let's just see if there's any questions, shall we, before we uh, wrap things up. Got a comment here. Lovely work, congratulations to all. Made me think about Dali Abbey differently as a place through art and performance. Will the films be available after the live sessions for others to view? Absolutely. Um, all the films are now on the Derwent Valley Mills YouTube channel. Um, so they can all be watched on there and they'll also go on the Derwent Valley um, Mills website as well, Alison, won't they? And the QR code, the QR code on the bobbins takes you on your phone to it as well. Yes. yes. I mean, maybe now is a good time to share the, some images of the, the bobbins and the bunting. Just see if I can do that. Here we go. So yes, if you visit um, Dali Abbey between now and the 23rd of May, um, keep your eyes peeled for this trail. There's um, numerous different spots which all kind of mark where um, a lot of the performances happened or what inspired the, uh, the heritage and um, that inspired the performances. So you can see some of this wonderful bunting that's been made by um, children from the different schools, members of the community. Um, anybody specific you want to mention, Janet, in terms of the bunting? Sorry, say that again, Janet. My fault. Um, everybody who's made there's been so many there's there's also a little story with one set of bunting and uh, so you need to have a little hunt for turkey duck um and look for that um there was some very special um bunting all put together in exactly the order as i was told by the little girl who made it uh, that can be found at the schoolhouse now so in case she's looking so but everybody who contributed because a lot of it was anonymous just all again collected at the shop and uh, day by day they were bringing me more and more of it so thank you all <laughs> it looks absolutely wonderful throughout Dali Abbey um so it will be there for two weeks uh, not just for today um Leo did you want to say anything about the designers 
who you know came up with the with this idea yes absolutely so i'd like to thank um holly and seb for their work on this so what we wanted to do was to get a physical um, presence uh, in Dali Abbey and to link everything together. So the locations in which the bobbins and also the threads of, of bunting uh, all relate to the, the performances themselves. So if you are out and about um, looking at this bunting is that you can take a photo of the, the barcode that you will see and that will take you to the video which relates to the um, the location. So we wanted to get a, a, a lovely holistic feeling of the project in its totality. Thank you, Leo. Okay, so before we go, um, I'll just share a few of these comments that have been coming through. Um, we have one here from Nick Brown. Thanking everybody for their efforts. We've got Mark here. Oh, sorry, I've shown that one before. Oh, Georgina says, uh, definitely a school anthem, for sure. Dali Abbey and me. And what else have we got? And Becky Howie saying, well done. Can't wait to see the bunting in situ. Thank you. OK, so um, just to wrap up, really, really want to say a massive thank you to Leo and all of this Concella team, you've been amazing and you've worked so hard to just reinvent um, Spinner Tail after the pandemic started. So thank you. Um, Janet, you've been amazing. <laughs> and this wouldn't have been possible without you. And obviously, you know, different people that you've brought in from the community as well, um, different partners. So thank you very much. And of course, all the schools, the volunteers and contributors to the songs, to the flags and to the Bunting, and of course, Arts Council England and National Lottery Heritage Fund as well. So just uh, quickly before we go, we'd love to hear people's feedback, uh, which means that we can gain more funding in the future. So I'll just share a um, evaluation form in the comments. If anybody has time to complete that, it'll take five minutes and that would really be great to hear your feedback. So just remains to say thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you, Alison, Janet, and Leo. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, thanks. everyone. And, and also, will... thanks to the England for me as well. <laughs> <laughs> we will see you next time. Okay. Bye now. Bye. Everybody. Bye. Bye.